Hey, Greg, how you doing, hey, man? How you doing? Yeah, good, good, man, good, good. Very good. Um, so we thought we'd just have a quick catch up on a um, few things about blockchain. Yep. Uh, some benefits and, um, and challenges and um, ethics as well. Ooh. So something, <laughs> like, you know, a few interesting, like, you know, these are get, you know, pointed out, you know, by a few companies, few people who come and see us. So, you know, we thought it'd be good to have a, a quick chat about those ones. Like, you know, um, so first question. What are some of the benefits of adopting blockchain technology? So the benefits of adopting blockchain technology. Uh, there are many benefits. Mm -hmm. Security, transparency, efficiency, traceability, privacy. There's, there's, there's quite a few. Yep. Some of those, however, are double-edged swords. Mm -hmm. If you take the um, privacy yep. part, right? Um, when you look at the uh, the benefits uh, for privacy with the blockchain, now um, this thing called a zk proof, yep. which is zero knowledge proof. Yeah. So which means um, now it's not a blockchain, but it's algorithms. So it's like how can you can prove something happened without revealing. You can prove that something is what it is yeah. without knowing what without it is. Without knowing what it is. Right? Yes. And then you put the blockchain into it, then you bring the blockchain, the verification, don't trust, but verify yeah. aspect to it. And that makes it like, okay, it's on the yeah. blockchain. And, you know, uh, that makes it, um, I, I think that, that's a huge, you know, privacy benefit that, you know. Oh, a, a, absolutely. I mean, I, I would probably get this along without wanting to get mm. too deep into it. Um, was actually a friend of ours yep. that, that had me read a paper ages and ages ago that went back to the old um, Middle Eastern times. And it was almost like, you know, Alibaba and the 40 Thieves type deal where there was a thing of caves, like a, a whole, yep. like, what do you call it when there's a whole heap of caves running off each other? I don't know, a Whatever. terrace like, cave? Oh, no, I, don't I, don't, I don't know. But it, but it was one of those things where, and, and in the story, it explains that this guy knows where the secret passage is mm -hmm. without actually revealing uh -huh. where the secret passage is. Got it. So it was kind of like, you know, at, at any one of these particular forks, it was like you could choose to go right or left, or they would tell him to go either right yes. or left, and he would still appear at this other spot. And, and the point of the story is that it explains in simple terms how zero knowledge works. works yeah. So you know that this guy knows his way out of the caves mm. without you knowing what the secret of the exactly. caves is. Yeah. And, and that's how it works. Yeah. Cool. So um, what are the other benefits? So that's one of the privacy benefits. And if yep. you talk about um, like security. Well, the security would come, and, and this all, of course, depends on what data you're putting on chain. Of course. Um, it could be to verify, like it could be the hash of mm -hmm. data that goes up there, not the data itself. So yeah, so the prove, integrity. So, so that would prove the authenticity yes. of data. Yep. Um, and therefore, in that instance, keep the data private. But as far as securing it goes, that's a whole mm -hmm. other level. That's where cryptography comes mm. in. Actually, it's a good point. Today, today we had uh, we attended the ICT forum yeah. and talk, spoke about um, ChatGPT, right? And uh, one of the uh, members I was talking to, um, he was saying, look, now with AI, you got a lot of deep fakes. Yeah. And that means like security camera footage mm -hmm. that could be altered. Yeah. So how cool it would be that the now this is not for all the camera footage this is only maybe this could be for high security areas for example now if that's camera footage like get live streamed into a place that you know get encrypted and get stored in the blockchain that and then you get hashed and stored in the blockchain yeah. that way you are guaranteeing that you know authentic authenticity and the integrity of the Footage. You've essentially got two choices. One yeah. is to try and store all of the data somewhere securely, mm. which is a very, very costly, especially when you're talking blockchain because yes. of the amount of data. So, yeah, the idea would be to hash that data, store the hash on the blockchain mm. because it therefore becomes immutable, which can then prove that that footage hasn't been altered. Yeah. However, if that footage gets altered, 
you could prove that it's been altered. That's been altered. But where's the original footage? Yes. So the, there's yeah. still security concerns to consider mm. in that instance, I guess, because yeah. you wouldn't want the, the video to go missing or because missing. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Next question. What are some of the challenges facing the adoption of the blockchain technology? Uh, the biggest one that comes to my mind, well, the first one that comes to my mind each time, um, is education. Yeah, so that's where it all starts, it, right? It really does. And, and the confusion or the misconception that a lot of people have that blockchain is crypto and, yes. you know, vice versa, that sort of thing. So there's a huge knowledge gap there. And I'm not suggesting that everybody go and learn what blockchain is to be able to use it. Sure, if that's something you're interested in, then go and do that. But the general uptake of the populace, it needs to be seamless. It needs to be behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. They don't need to know that it's blockchain. Yep. They just need to know that it performs the way that it does and that it solves a problem. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, when, when it comes to e-commerce, same thing, right? All these, the, the, the data or the products are saved in the database and the orders are saved in the database and that's how you get tracked and all that. Yeah. But people don't know how that order is saved. It's like my order is there. That's right. I need to be shipped. Yep. And that's all it is. So same thing with the blockchain. So the challenges that I would, you, you touched a really good point about education and the people who make those decisions are the owners, founders, uh, the C-suite uh, executives, right? Yep. And if they don't have the understanding of the blockchain, like, oh, see, cryptocurrency, or we don't want to be in the cryptocurrency. Yeah. You know, we are... You know, we are not into that, you know, because I think people still believe, you know, some people believe um, that crypto is a Ponzi because they don't understand it. They don't, they don't want to spend their time learning what that is, right? Mm -hmm. so, so how can these leaders, the founders, how can we educate them on the blockchain space? Like, well, I, I guess use cases. I mean, as the technology gets simpler, it'll be easier for the general mm. public. So the general public, you don't have to educate. But you're right. The people that need to move their businesses and processes to something better, like it, it provided it gives them a benefit, then yes, they, they need to, I guess, educate mm. themselves somewhat. But it, it's one of those things where the benefits will outweigh mm. any negative connotations that they may have. Mm. So if it gives you that absolute proof of data integrity that we were just talking about, for example, and that's critical to your business, then that gives you a leg up on your competition mm -hmm. and will well and truly be worthwhile doing. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And the other part is um, as much as the education, the other challenge is the investment that, you know, goes into this uh, space, the blockchain space, because we know there are, uh, bull markets, the bear markets. I never heard of these two words until I really got involved, right? So during the bull market, uh, when the markets are high, the crypto is doing well, there's a lot more money flooding in. And when there is not enough, we see like a lot of projects, good projects uh, died because not enough liquidity being. Uh, and a lot of that goes to exactly what we were just saying. And, and it's part of the confusion that mm. people have between blockchain and crypto. Mm -hmm. Your bull and bear markets are a market term, yes. right, for whether they're yeah. going well or not. And that's referring to the crypto market. Mm. None of it impacts blockchain. You could be using it for supply chain or anything else that you're, you know, that, that that's, I guess, beneficial yes. to your business and processes. But it's got nothing to do with the market. But people tend to only want to invest in this technology if crypto is doing well, which is completely bizarre as far as it I'm is, concerned. Right. I think that that's super important. So the, um, really, uh, the uh, the investment should come into building technology on top of the blockchain um, rather than looking at one of the projects that has been, or one of the use cases that's been built on top of the blockchain. So it's like saying, okay, I'm going to put all my money on a Shopify website, for example, just Shopify yeah. instead of, oh, let's, there's Amazon here. Let's look at Amazon or a different, you know, uh, and other industries. So I, I guess that's what we had to educate people on and understand it, that. It, it's almost to the point where, and I use this analogy quite a lot, where if blockchain is the internet, mm. and crypto is just one of the applications or things that runs on top of it, um, 
treating it like the internet. It'd be like saying, oh, no, no, I'm going to go back to faxing people because I don't want to use email because nobody's using Facebook anymore. That's how much sense that makes yep. when people aren't investing in blockchain technology just because of the crypto market. Yep. Cool. So we spoke about education, um, investment as a challenge. Um, are there any more challenges that you can think of? Oh, there are many. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for another one. <laughs> um, well, I mean, there's, there's, it, it, I guess it depends on what you're doing. If you're using a public blockchain, then you don't have to worry about infrastructure, you, you, you're not concerned with consensus mechanisms yourself because they're already in place. Mm -hmm. But then you have to consider the opposite side of that coin, which is depending on what data you're putting up there, it comes back to the privacy, um, you know, cost of transactions and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So if in, in the terms of using something like Hyperledger Fabric, yes. um, which would be a permissioned blockchain, then that's okay for one company if everybody within the company is tracking its stuff in there, but there's no provenance for any of those objects that you're yep. storing on chain unless your suppliers are involved. Mm -hmm. And the benefit to consumers would mean that it would need to flow back down the other side. Makes sense. Yep. Cool. Thank you. All right. Next question. What are some of the ethical considerations around blockchain adoption? First one again is privacy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so while it's it, it, it could be used for privacy, and it could be used, well, not used. If it's misused, then privacy becomes an issue. I yep. guess. So you can cryptographically protect data, as we said. Mm -hmm. um, but the important thing to remember is that it's immutable. So I'm I'm a big proponent of. Don't put anything online that you're not happy for everybody else on the planet to know. Hmm. But when it comes to blockchain, it depends on who's putting your data on chain. I mean, it's the same on, on the internet yep. full stop. You know, the, um, the latest Latitude Finance hack, yes. for example, and people's data gets put up online, mm -hmm. then that was a third party putting your private data online. And that's what people, you know, get freaked out about yep. because then it gets used by bad actors. Mm -hmm. However, if somebody storing you know your data on a public blockchain so yes. it might be personal medical records or something mm -hmm. of that nature that's not real cool you no. know that's that that's a problem yeah but if it was a permission blockchain that was you know managed by a small group of other you know hospital government mm -hmm. entities something of that nature provided you trusted them then that's fine mm -hmm. or better yet you control the data and you control who has access to it, and you can revoke that access yep. at any time. So with regards to this, like we got GDPR. Yes. I mean, yeah, and um, they say, like, okay, delete my information. Yeah, delete it. Yeah, that's right. Right. D depending on what data is up on, like if it's on a chain like that, yeah. then no, it's, you can't delete it's not it. going anywhere. Right. It's so there. it's super important for any business who's picking Okay, we want to go with the blockchain. Yeah. You have to pick and choose how you want to use it, where you can use it, and yeah. what data you're going to use, uh, you know, put on chain. So it can be even, if you want to put customer data, okay, look at like a way of hashing that information. Mm -hmm. And um, anonymizing it as you would. Anonymizing, yeah. 100%, exactly. Yeah. So that's important. Yeah. Anything else? Well, a flow on from that would then be the governance, um, and accountability of data, I mm. guess. So until, I mean, as, as we both know, the new legislation comes in thick fast at the yes. moment in this industry. So I guess there needs to be particular guidelines mm. that people have to adhere to so that that type of thing doesn't happen. Yeah. So, you know, government governance and, you know, the legal requirements would be another one for me. All right. Yeah. And can I throw a little bit of a curveball in there? Sure. So we had these things uh, at the moment being discussed in each country called these called CBDCs. Yes. And um, for people who are thinking, what are CB, CDBs, CBDCs, yep. central bank digital, digital currencies. Now, there's people who love it, people who hate it. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't come across anyone who's type of in the middle, like, oh, yeah, we, we, it makes sense because people who, who doesn't like it, they really understand, they, they can see 
how that can be misused. We can start it, but they can really see how it can be misused. And people who love it, they see the other benefit of, because like, oh, everyone knows about my things anyway. So it will be so easy for me to do transactions if they're like in the business world, mm -hmm. doing cross-border transactions. Oh my God, I just do it now. And then, in, you, know, you know, however number of seconds, it shows up in the other end and it's going to, you know, streamline the process, less transaction fees and all that. So in your mind, how would something like a CBDC could, um, could play out with the, when it comes to ethics out there? It's, there's a couple of things, I guess. One, again, back to the privacy. Um, although it might be a misconception that people have now that what they're spending their money on is private because mm -hmm. unless it's cash transaction, um, it can be traced. Obviously, there are chargebacks on mm. credit cards. Everybody's tapping and going. Each time you do that, you know, if you're using your phone, it's generating a pretend card number that it uses so that it's not using the authentic card number mm. for, for protection of that sort of stuff. So um, that's a big one. So obviously, being able to track anything that you spend stuff on. But I guess then it's because it's central and, and, and that maybe that's the issue. Mm -hmm. At this stage, okay, if bank A puts a block on your card and says, no, you're not spending any money, you can go to bank B, okay? But when we're talking something central and it's controlled by a single entity, if that entity all of a sudden decides that, no, you're not allowed to spend your money on X over here, then they can stop that transaction from happening. Mm -hmm. And that's probably my bigger concern. Yep. Um, I could give you specific examples if you would like. Why not? Yes. So if, if you were talking like there's um, anybody that's on, like, say, a government. Like NDIS, for example. Or, or I'm just talking government payments. Okay, and, yes. And I won't be specific about what types. Yep. But they can try and limit what items you're allowed to purchase with the money that they've provided you. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand that the reasoning for it is trying to, you know, yep for the benefit of the beneficiary in this yes. instance, but at what point is that amount of control too mm. much? Yeah, because uh, cross I guess as a government, they had to be accountable for the taxpayers, uh, yeah. because as taxpayers, um, they're like, okay, look, where did my money go? Um, and then the government, I guess, has a responsibility to make sure that, that the funds are being spent accordingly. Yeah. And, uh, and sometimes it can, you know, like you said, restrict people from doing what they need. Be like, okay, look, I got the money, but I can't spend on what I want. It's, it's, it really is an ethical dilemma. Mm. It, it, it truly, truly is because nobody should have that amount of control imposed on them, as far yes. as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. But, in, and, and worst case scenario here, let's just say there's a family that's receiving a government payment that has two children. Mm. Should that money be spent on, you know, gambling? alcohol, things of that nature, and not feeding the children? Mm -hmm. Well, no, you're going to want to make sure the of kids course. are fed, but should you be imposing that control mm -hmm. on those people? Yeah. I think there might be other ways to do it, is yeah. all I'm saying. As humans, I think yeah. uh, we should be given some choice. Hey? Yeah. Cool. All right, next question. How can businesses and organizations best prepare for the adoption of blockchain technology? Education. Yep. Um, identifying whether there are particular use cases for blockchain mm -hmm. or what advantages it would give them in business. Yeah. Um, making sure they're adhering to any data privacy requirements. So that education privacy tend to come up a lot, but yeah. they are very big, important things. Um, any legal or regulatory requirements and certainly make sure that whatever you're building is going to be interoperable with whatever mm -hmm. it is, like suitable for purpose, I yep. guess. As, as the example I gave before, if you were using something to, to supply chain tracking, that's all well and good internally. So, you know, you might go off and invest in the education and build this thing. But if you've got 14 suppliers and they all say not, not interested in using it, then you, know, a bit, you would need to get their buy-in prior to mm. that. So, but that, again, can be done as a, a group effort and collaboration and could therefore have cost savings as well as them providing all of the benefits that blockchain does. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that you mentioned um, education here. Yeah. Again, 
um, because this technology at the moment is still not really out there. Like, um, you know, a lot of people are like, what is blockchain? They understand it's some sort of a chain connect, uh, connecting two things, <laughs> many things, but they really don't understand what that technology does, right? So, um, very high level, what is the blockchain? Oh, it depends who I'm explaining this to, but in simple terms, it's information, data, okay? Now, each data, each block of data, hence the blockchain, mm -hmm. um, has hash against it, which is essentially, I don't know the best way to describe a hash even. Yeah. Um, it's like compresses into like a few characters, like well, unique characters. Yeah, it, it, it's like a fingerprint of that yeah. data is probably the best yeah. way to describe it, okay? Mm -hmm. And then the fingerprint of that data is used in the next block. Hmm. That's a key to, a key. to lock it, lock so, that data. So what that does is that chain, it's like a chain of evidence, I guess, hmm. with signatures on it. Maybe yeah. that's a better explanation. I'm just making this up as I go. Um, but if any one block of data is changed, not only do you have, like, you know, obviously whatever governance mechanism is being used on that blockchain, mm -hmm. um, you know, if it's a 51% you know, yes. type of thing, like 51% of the nodes have to agree that the data is correct. But if any one of them's changed, A, they get ignored. But even if mm -hmm. it got past that, it would then make all of the previous blocks all invalid. invalid. Yeah. So it, it main, it, it's to maintain data, maintain integrity, data integrity, which right. is then comes back into the immutability of it yes. as to why if, you know, Bob Smith's data is up there in block number four yes. and he says, I need you to delete my data, you, you can't, you can't do, that. do The that. reason for not being able to delete it is because it then changes the structure of that data, which then impacts yeah. the entire yeah. chain. So you have to undo the whole chain and that's where the yeah, computing power... Back. You'd be going not... back and starting again every 30 seconds as each of these requests came yeah. in. So um, by ex you explaining that for me, uh, something that came to my mind straight away is like when you said about uh, it, it's, a, it's a ledger. So anyone who's, who has a, for me, uh, the industry that comes to my, my head straight away is like the finance sector, uh, like loan applications, mm -hmm. um, the more the insurance, the underwrite, underwriting of insurance and, um, and even uh, the audits that you yep. do on companies and these can be on the blockchain because they are ledgers and even like when it comes to forensic uh, accountancy what they do is they audit audit a company you know for so ISO standards yeah all that for my my head that's where it goes to it goes to oh it almost like a ledger it has it's a standard all that can go on a blockchain mm -hmm. so absolutely but, but mm -hmm. it's not just that that can mm -hmm. go on a blockchain um Obviously, people think finance. A lot of that, again, comes from the whole cryptocurrency is blockchain yeah. and it's financial. Um, but real estate records, as, mm -hmm. as you sort of touched on there, but then also like, you know, automotive, aerospace, manufacturing. Yeah. Of course. Um, and I'm not just talking supply chain there. We were, like, mm. you know, talking about manufacturing equipment and the service. Service history. And history yes. and things of that nature. So. God forbid anybody ever got injured at a workplace, you know, using a piece of mm. industrial machinery. But then how do you prove that that machine had the appropriate service levels and upkeep and was done, you know, on, yeah. on the appropriate times mm. um, for you to not be liable? Well, I mean, that information can be tracked with IoT devices. Yes. It can alert you. It Not only will it save lives and injuries, mm. but it'll save downtime, which then mm. saves money for companies. And also the insurance the premiums. That. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and for example, now if a company has been uh, like a real estate company, been op been uh, been operational since two thousand, yep. right? So that's almost like two decades ago, right? And now this new technology, you know, is here. How could they prepare as an organization? To adopt blockchain like very high level we don't know their processes but as a as a general blanket if you talk about it um, how would how could they adopt well the first the first thing to do is to go and speak to somebody knowledgeable on the subject to understand if there are valid use cases for blockchain for that particular mm -hmm. industry or company 
but how can they even how do they know the person they're talking to is blockchain savvy they might be not talking to someone who's like they're like oh yeah blockchain don't worry about it. that's that, that's not going to and that's what happened to me when someone told me about bitcoin i'm like yeah no, that's, a, that's a fad forget about it right <laughs> 2009 yeah um so as a business owner um if we, if they go to someone and be like okay what do you think like oh nah it's because they go to them thinking that they're trustworthy because you're like oh you know why would you go and ask someone else who's not so i just want to give them like more like the pointers if we take the immutability the transparency and the decentralization mm -hmm. of the blockchain how could a business use it as a carbon um, like a trace, like on top of their, almost like overlaying it on top of their business and like, oh, okay, so my business has these things, I can see the potential, so it is somewhat compatible. Well, it may, the business may not have those things, but mm. may benefit from having those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it might simplify processes, it might simply, like from the immutability standpoint, mm. protect the, the integrity of the data. Yeah. Okay. Um, th there's many, many use cases, mm. but the first thing they should do is either try to educate themselves mm. or, like I said, go and speak to somebody that knows. Mm. And it's funny that you said, how do they know that that person knows? Yes. Well, that's another use case for blockchain mm. and putting accreditation data on it so that you know. So if I could just quickly digress and go of into course. To yes. the real estate example of, yes. you know, besides fractionalizing real estate, putting real estate contracts on chain, you know, disintermediating um, the conveyances and things of that nature. But if you're talking about the service history of vehicles, right? So, you know, Bob's ute, all its service history, if it's ever had a recall, is on there. Bob happens to be an electrician. So Bob's accreditation details are on chain, mm. okay? So that you know that Bob's a registered Sparky and good to work on your house. And any work that's done on your house is then on chain, like a service history for a vehicle, but for a property, and everything is traceable back. Mm. So again, how do you know? Well, that's a use case yeah. for blockchain. Yeah. So then even come to a point that when they, and again, like we had to be keep in mind, like even when you're saying these things, obviously you can't implement it as is. You have to think of the, the privacy issues, like, you know, when you're putting your property addresses or people's names otherwise you don't want anyone to out there to work it out you know jim smith lives at this address for example yeah. and there's always uh, that has to be come through but in a in a like i i understand exactly where you're coming from and this is what the blockchain is really good because it removes the trust factor mm -hmm. and it introduces a verification factor yeah. right and i think uh, any business that uh, or organization uh, that looking to implement the blockchain if they look at these key key aspects of the blockchain i'm pretty sure any business can find a use case but um you really don't want to go and and it's okay if your business doesn't need the blockchain like a magazine like a publisher you know well maybe they do or at least adjacent to it mm -hmm. so for media for example like you know um Photographers taken, like, you know, these marvelous shots, you know, you've seen some of the brilliant ones that are in Time magazine and things like that. Some of those are, are mm. literally timeless, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, but who was it that had that, like, owned that original mm. photograph? Like, the provenance of that. So if that, if, if I hash that image, for example, and that hash is stored up on the blockchain, then I can then prove that that was an image that I took, that I have the rights for, so that, you know, when it's yeah. being used in publication, mm. it's covered. Yeah. We, we had a, a discussion a while back, and if there are a lot of industries or businesses that aren't even nearly related that would still benefit from blockchain, even if it's a, not a direct use, a direct use by case. that company yes. themselves. Yep. Okay? If concert tickets mm. were NFTs and on-chain, not only A, then, you know, you have your ticket, obviously, but if part of that information, even if it's just the number of people attending, is public, mm. then the food vendor in the food truck knows where he's going to have the best, you know, bang for buck yes. to park his truck that evening. Of course. You know, so a food truck, you wouldn't think would have to be on chain, 
but it could certainly benefit from other data. Other data. Okay. So there's going to be a lot of flow on from, from yeah. what happened. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Craig, for your time. Thank and, you. And uh, it's a good catch up. And this conversation never tires me because you get to learn more, right? <laughs> the more we talk, the more um, areas we touch, the more use cases and yeah. case studies. So um, gets us going. And and I just want to uh, just put it out there as well. Uh, you might you could be spending so much time in this space, but there's still so much that you don't know oh. as well, right? Constant, so constant learn learning process and. And um, we hope that's what we brought to our community. That's what's interesting about when people come in mm. with, with something is that it can spark either thoughts that, you know, or, or ideas that you would not have normally had or lead us to explore and educate ourselves so yeah. much more. All right. On that note, thank you, Greg. Thank you. Catch you later. Thank you.